We mentioned in the last couple of days there are two ways to define a sequence. Uh, the first is explicitly, which we did in section 13.1. Section 13.2 will look at the recursive definition and how to find them, define them recursively. In section 13.1, we worked to come up with formulas that would allow us to find any term in the sequence. Those were the explicit formulas. It was nice. We could find the 50th, the 500th, anything we wanted as soon as we came up with that formula. Some sequences are defined recursively, which is what this section is about. Um, it's defined in terms of the previous term, or Tn minus 1. That's only going to allow us to find one at a time, but they are helpful in other ways. So here's an example of a recursive definition. It says give the first four terms, so we're looking for T1, T2, T3, and T4. T1 we're given, so that one's all set. We have T1 equals 5. For T2, how that's going to work is Tn minus 1, we said, is the previous term. So we want to take T1 and add 3 to that. So our T2 is going to be 5 plus 3, or 8. For T sub 3, we want to take T sub 2, which is 8. I'm just going to write that right in. And add 3 to that, so we get 11. Finally, for T sub 4, we need to take T sub 3, which is 11, and add 3 to get 14. So it asks us for the four, first four terms. Your answers are 5, 8, 11, and 14. That's the gist of how the recursive formulas work. This example will work pretty similarly, but we do have a slightly more complicated recursive definition. We're still trying to find the first four terms. T sub 1 is given to us, that's 7. For T sub 2, definition tells us we need to do 3 times T sub n minus 1, or the previous term. Here's where that 7 comes in. And then subtract 11. In this case, it's 21 minus 11. So your T sub 2, or your second term, is 10. For T sub 3, we need to take 3 times the previous term which in this case is t sub 2, which we found to be 10. Subtract 11 from that. So that's 30 minus 11. So our t sub 3 is 19. And then our t sub 4, we need to do 3 times 19 and subtract 11. So there we have 57 minus 11. Our fourth term is, four, fourth term, excuse me, is 46. So again, we were asked for the first four terms. T sub 1 is 7, T sub 2 is 10, T sub 3 is 19, and T sub 4 is 46. What you'll notice about this example is we're given T sub 1 and T sub 2. And in our T sub n, or our recursive definition, there's a T sub n minus 1 in there and a T sub n minus 2. T sub n minus 2 is going to be two terms ago. So we have to look back to the previous term and then one beyond that. So we're still looking for our first four terms here. T sub 1 is 12, that's given to us. T sub 2 is 4, that's given to us. So really we only have to find two more terms. Let's take a look at T sub 3. T sub 3 is going to be T sub n minus 1, which is the previous term. So we look back to, in this case, T sub 2. We're going to use our 4 here. Then we add to that 2 times T sub n minus 2. T sub n minus 2 means we need to go back two terms and use that term. So our 4 came in here and our 12 is going here. What we get for an answer here, we have 4 plus 24, so our T sub 3 is 28. The last term we need to find is T sub 4. Again, we take T sub n minus 1, or the last term, which in this case is T sub 3, or our 28. Then we add to that 2 times t sub n minus 2. Two terms before where we are is our t sub 2. So that's where your 4 will come in. Our fourth term is now 28 plus 8 for 36. So your first four, ter four terms here, not twice in a row now. Uh, t sub 1 is 12, t sub 2 is 4, t sub 3 is 28, and t sub 4 is 36. We can also do these backwards, so we're given the sequence and we have to come up with a recursive definition. The first thing you want to do is look for a pattern. In this case, we can see these are all being multiplied by 3 from term to term. 
and that pattern continues indefinitely as we have the dot dot dots at the end. To write the definition, we've seen that these things have two parts. The first one, you need to define a term. In most cases, it's the first term, and we'll do the same here. So t sub 1 equals 2, and all you're doing is copying that first term for that. Then we need to define t sub n. Well, we've established that our pattern is simply multiplying the previous term by 3. If you want t sub 4, if you want to get to 54, you need to take 18 and multiply it by 3. So to write that in general, we can write t sub n minus 1 times 3. Or in other words, to clean it up a little bit, 3 times t sub n minus 1. So our final answer here would be these two parts, t sub 1 equals 2 and t sub n equals 3 times t n minus 1. For part B, we're going to attack this the same way. We're looking for a uh, pattern. In this case, we're subtracting 3 with all of them. So we need two parts. In this case, our t sub 1 equals 20. And to define t sub n, we want to take t sub n minus 1, or the previous term, and subtract 3 from that. That would be a recursive definition. We're going to look at part C on the next slide. We may need a little bit more room for that one. This example is definitely more complicated, but we want to take the same strategy. We're looking for a pattern. Here we have a plus 2, then a plus 3, then a plus 4, then a plus 5. So we don't have a consistent pattern, but we are adding one more each time. So to start our definition, we're going to write t sub 1 equals 1. We always want to define that first piece. Now the plus 2 here, when we add 2, we're trying to get t sub 2. t sub 2 is 3. When we add 3, we're trying to get t sub 3. So we're really adding whatever term we want. In general, that's t sub n. So what we're doing from term to term is adding n. If we wanted to find the sixth term, we would take the fifth term and add 6. And that would give us our 21, and our pattern would continue. How do we write that? Well, we have our first piece, t sub 1 equals 1. For t sub n, I'll do an example down here as we kind of craft this. For t sub 6, we would want to take t sub 5 and add 6 to that. So in general, it's going to be t sub n minus 1 plus n. So we can involve n in these formulas. That will complicate things, definitely. Um, we'll take a look at more like this tomorrow. But this would be your final answer. t sub 1 equals 1. And t sub n equals t sub n minus 1, or the previous term, plus n. The last problem from this video is going to combine the last two sections. So what we want to do is take a recursive definition, and we're given one down here. We're going to expand that out a little bit to try to look for a pattern, and then write that as an explicit definition. So let's see what that looks like. First, we want to write out some terms for the recursive definition. So we know that t sub 1 equals 3. For t sub 2, we take the previous term and add 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7. To find the third term, we would take the previous term, which in this case is 7, and add 4 to that, so we get 11. The pattern would continue, we get 15, and so on. So this formula is not too bad. Now what we want to do, we were given the recursive to start with, now we want to write an explicit formula. And this is what we worked on in section 13.1. So in this case, our pattern here is obviously plus 4. We're adding 4 for each of these. So to write our formula, remember explicit formulas are only one line. We would have t sub n equals, remember your formula, you'd go 3 plus, we're adding 4 each time, and we want to multiply that to n minus 1. If we simplify that, we'd have t sub n equals 3 plus 4n minus 4. Or your final answer would be t sub n equals 4n minus 1. To test this, we can look at recursively. We know our next term would be 19. That's our fifth term. Let's test the explicit definition. So if I use this formula here and say that t sub 5 equals 4 times 5 minus 1. There's your 19, and this formula works. So again, for this same sequence, 3, 7, 11, 15, 19, and so on, we have our recursive definition. 
and an explicit definition that describe the same sequence.